Hello, 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 and welcome to the show, the BTM Club In Conversation series with musical legends. And this week we have the phenomenal. Now, this lady has been quite difficult to get hold of, I have to say. We've been going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, but we eventually made it. And then I see this vision of hair and earrings, <laughs> and it all makes the wait worthwhile. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah, man, it's been kind of crazy over here. It has, hasn't it? How are you? I am well, thank you. How are you? All the better for seeing you finally. Great. <laughs> yes. How have you handled the pandemic? How has it been for you? <clears throat> Up and down, good okay. and bad. But, uh -huh. uh, thank God we're coming through. We are indeed. Yes. And I can see you're still trim and in shape. So obviously you weren't doing the fridge and the couch like everybody else during lockdown. I won't stand up. <laughs> I think that's the situation we're all in. We're all like, just bust bitches. No one's doing full legs at the moment. Not until later in the year anyway. Yeah, I, I think I picked up a few pounds as well. So that's why I'm, I'm hitting the treadmill every day now. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, better late than never. Do you know right? what I mean? It's like better late than it's never too late to start. Well, yes, of course, you know, it's, we have been wanting to speak to Joy Sims to hear her story and hear her tell her story her way. What okay. better way? So tell me from the beginning, how did it start for you, music? Wow, music. I've always loved music from, right. from the time I can remember. I, I grew up singing in the church choir, the youth choir. Um, from there, you know, started writing poems at first, then right. lyrics and, you know, writing music. I, um, you know, studied music, the theory of music and everything, but I just always loved music. And uh, in my hometown of Rochester, New York, I started playing in a lot of the local bands. Right. And, um, you know, from there, I just wanted to record. My thing was, I was always amazed with the recording studio and I wanted to record records and make make songs and things like that. So that's what I pursued. Right. And I, um, I had some really good friends in New York City. Well, actually my mother knew um, some people in New York City and that's how the, you know, the New York City connection came about, right. just word of mouth and I was all so you're Rochester New York State right that's where you New York State yes uh-huh now I have to say New York full stop whether it be the state or New York City itself uh -huh. seems to be the hub of so much talent we spoke yes. with Tom Brown and you know there, there's so many that come from New York New York City mm -hmm. and that vicinity is just phenomenal it is. I mean, you know, so New York, I mean, it's very, it's, it is big, but so many people come to New York City because Broadway is there. You think you can make it in New York, you can make it everywhere, anywhere. Uh, <laughs> people that's believe right that. For once said. <laughs> yes. So I know I wanted to come to New York City, you know, always yeah, yeah. love New York City. So, yes, yeah, it's just something magical about New York City, even in its worst days. It's just something magical about New York yeah, City. Yeah, just such a hub of talent. And yeah. I mean, don't quote me, but I think that is where tap dancing originated yeah. because of the, the African-American community out there and the Irish. And it's a mm -hmm. conglomeration of the two styles. Mm -hmm. So who is distracting Joy Sims when she's in her interview? Sorry. Do I need to have a word with him? <laughs> okay but also the common denominator seems to be that a lot of you well stateside in general more so than in the UK started with the church that yes. seems to be your foundation yes yes I mean if you think about it when you're young that's the only place you can really sing is in your church in the church yeah, yeah. So that was, you know, and the only place your parent will allow you to sing is in the church. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing. So as young as what age were you smitten by music and thought, this is what I have to do? Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's all I can remember. Like really? 13, 14. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Have you got a musical family, siblings, or, or are you the, the shining musical light in the family? Well, my mother was a great gospel singer. Okay. Awesome. Awesome singer. 
But right. yeah, I think I, I got it the uh, picked up a lot from my mom. And yeah. Uh, but yeah, none of my other siblings or my father, they didn't they didn't sing. You are the musical shining light. It's okay, don't be modest. You can say it. I am the musical shining light of the family. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'll let you say it. <laughs> <laughs> you let me say it. Okay. Yes. That's a good way out. So the, so tell me, when did it happen for you that you made it big with your singles, got signed, etc.? What was the journey leading up to that? I was working with this engineer in New York City over in Brooklyn, New York, as a matter of fact. And I was working on my demo. I was all in all coming to my life. Wow. It wasn't easy and lifetime love. That was my demo that I was. And so he gave me call the spec time, free studio time back then. And we worked on all in all. And he knew Will Sokoloff from Sleeping Bag Records. And he took right. my demo tape over to Will and he loved it. And um, Curtis Mantronic heard it and he loved it. And so that's how I was signed to the label. And it was a one one single deal in the beginning. So okay. that's how that came about. So you wrote those singles. Oh yeah. Oh, coming, you wrote them. They they're your penmanship. Oh yeah. Wrote words, music. I gave right. them a finished product. Right. But but that, that's what I was about to get to. It's so, so you had this finished product that they basically took as it was and obviously produced it, developed it, whatever. But, exactly. you know, it's not as if they wrote new material for you. They used the material you went to them with. Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Right. Definitely. Well, that's quite an accolade for your first big hits for it to be all yours. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was, I mean, you know, Curtis, he, he really did a great job with the production and everything. So, you know, he has yeah. to have props as well yes so I it was it was music then your fresh job or did you work other jobs until as oprah says you do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do <laughs> yes i struggled trying to work nine to five yeah. and <laughs> and to do music you know after work and so yes and the saving grace was in rochester my parents owned the soul food restaurant sims restaurant so i would work in the restaurant and okay. uh, during the day and in the evening i was either at band rehearsal or in some club playing so you know that made it really easy for me or it helped a lot i should say right like that. and once i left my hometown of rochester new york i i had to get a uh, a real job or I shouldn't even say a real job but I had to get another job to yeah um, you yeah, know, well, make yes. yes yeah absolutely so they had a soul food rest food, food yes. restaurant yes and yes. you worked there first now when you said to them you know what singing is the thing for me this is what I have to do how did they receive it were they supportive were they encouraging very encouraging. My mother has and father <clears throat> always were very encouraging. But the thing was, my mother was the head cook. And if she wasn't there, I was the head cook. So, you know, me thinking, oh, I can't leave my mom. She needs me, but I really need to do this music. So one day, my mother and I, we were very close. She's passed, God rest her soul. I still miss her soul. And um, so I'm like, mom, I really can't do what I need to do here. I really need to go to New York. So she looks at me and say, well, what are you waiting for? Get up and go. <laughs> it was like she released me, you know, because yeah. I thought, well, I can't leave my mom. She needs me here. You know, but she said, go. Well, said, yeah, really? you know, and, and that is showing support and encouragement mm -hmm. in itself because she's saying, you know what? I know you can't fulfill mm -hmm. your potential here. You've right. got to get up, get out. You've got to get away from me as much as I miss you, but mm -hmm. don't stay for me. Do yes. what you have to do and, and make your journey as she obviously did, you know? Yes, yes. But yes. Which is, which is lovely and supportive because a lot of parents would be like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to manage without you. How am I going <laughs> to, you know? So yes. she, it, it was nice. And she knew that you were waiting for mm -hmm. Her to say it. Yeah. <laughs> knew I, I would not leave her if she needed yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd still be there now in the soul food shop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. So when did you leave Rochester and go to New York City? I, think I left, actually left in 
84, 85. Because okay. everything right. started to happen so fast once I left New York. Yeah. yeah, once I got to New York. Because the singles came out in 87, wasn't it? 87 around then? Um, around 86, 87, yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. So it did happen pretty quickly yes. from your move from Rochester to New York City. And then, you know, bam, Joy Sims hits our screens and stage. <laughs> and the first single was All in All. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's from the album. What was the album called? Come Into My Life. The album's called Come Into My Life, which yes. was the second single, of course, which is like, up no, there. The second single was um, "Lifetime Love." Okay. The second single, yeah, and then okay. then um, "Come Into My Life." But "Come Into My Life" just went on another level, didn't it? Yeah. Really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I can see it because look at the smile when I say "Come Into Your Life." <laughs> the <laughs> smile comes up. <laughs> All right. Yes. But then it seemed like you disappeared and went quiet. What was happening in those years? Can I ask that? <laughs> family. Family okay. was happening. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Family, you know, um, family. The person that's distracting uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Our technicians in the back. <laughs> but, but family, uh, and then the label started going through changes. Right. At sleeping, everything started changing actually during that time. Um, yeah, but it was mainly family, you know, family time. Okay. I mean, Make but I fun. never stopped writing. I never stopped, you know, working on music, but it was just... Well, I don't think anybody that really is a creative, a musician, a singer ever stops, but they might momentarily yes. disappear from the public eye, but it doesn't mean that they're not still doing stuff. Right, right, right. I, I, look, I did retire to myself once or twice but <laughs> it didn't last <laughs> but the stage was calling you too much you're like okay <laughs> this is it i'm done now i'm finished oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah but you know maybe one more try <laughs> <laughs> right yeah yes. you know yeah. <laughs> yeah because that's your passion right that you you it love is. it forever it's not going to be you know yeah. something that you give up and fortunately if you still have the voice you do it till the end of time yeah you know like the great <laughs> till the end of time but um, so you are back out with a new single. Yes, everybody's going through something. Something, that's Actually, right. Actually, it came out last year. Okay. And I was working with on the new album, which has changed. I'm not gonna move ahead, but everybody's going through something. Came out last year, and um, it's still my current, you know, latest single. Right. And I, I was writing that song with another artist in mind, but um, you know, things was happening and I started listening to the lyrics and I'm like- And it was another one of those stage calling you saying, maybe one more time, <laughs> I should be doing this. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that doesn't happen often. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, but the lyrics and everything was so in touch with what was happening in, with the pandemic and everything. And yeah. people just so on, uh, uncertain of everything what's going to happen even myself you know an artist and it was just a crazy time but yeah. we had to you know be rest assured that everything is going to be okay and you know don't try and hold everything to yourself talk about it there's you know because everybody is going through something at this time and and try I mean, not to perfectly hold it. appropriate title yes and Everybody's going through their own thing, handling it in their own way. And I have to say, we have to give a very big thank you to you musicians for the simple reason you guys got us through the pandemic because uh -huh. you put on your records and you dance around your living room with a scotch or a rum and it doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> you know? All right. All right. <laughs> And of course, many of you were using the time to write and create yeah. still. So that was great. Yes. Yeah, it gave us a lot of, um, thank God I had, you know, I have my studio at home and I was able to continue to record and yeah. write. So that was really a saving grace for me as well. 
I mean, it, it, it's all changed so much because you now have the studio at home that you can just go at your leisure, at your convenience and write and create when you feel like. And yeah. everyone that I've spoken to over this period from Tom Brown to Cherie Brown, Chris Jasper, they've all said, yeah, you know, I would just go and write and, yeah. and just go and create. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So you've got your on an album, is it AP? Is that correct? AP? Oh, AP Connection. Uh, no, that's that, right. That's a, a collaboration I right. did a group called AP Connection. Okay. And that single, I wrote a single called uh, Today, Tomorrow, Forever. Yeah. And that release is June 7th. Okay. So that was a collaboration with the group. They're from, it's a duo from Italy. And they contacted me, and as well as other artists, about um, doing uh, a collaboration. I yes, because I've really seen some ads and promos for it. Yeah. I've seen yours. And mm -hmm. a lot of artists on there, as you say, it's a collaboration with lots of artists like Junior Giscom and, yes. and, and stuff, So, which is, is great. And it seems that AP Connection are almost in the footsteps of like change or mm -hmm. BB&Q, the Italian okay. production. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and bringing different artists in because that's how change started. You know, there were an Italian production brought in people like Luther, and and okay. so it seems like it's that kind of of setup. I didn't know that. Oh. Okay, very good. <laughs> <laughs> so that single's coming out when June seventh. Right. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to your album, which is hopefully coming out when this year. This year, okay. Yeah, this is coming. Well, I, I am, look, I've been pushing this release date back. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you another date. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to August. I'm okay. really looking forward to August. <laughs> August, okay, for now. But you know, if it's not August, we'll have to speak again and do part two. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So tell me how it is for you coming up in music in the era that you did releasing uh -huh. singles that you did in the 80s and releasing music now in 2020 and 2021 because it's all changed so much. It's a completely different machine. How are you coping with it? I love it. Um, okay. I love it as an artist, as an independent artist. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so much freedom and there's so many services available to the independent artists. Um, you can... You know, I have my own label, August Rose Records. You can get distribution there. I mean, you just have to really look at it and work it as a business as you're really, okay, you're a real uh, record label here. So you have to have marketing, promotion, you, now it's social media and everything. And you just have to look at it that way and, and approach it that way. Right. Um, I mean, because everything is available to you. You just have to take advantage of it. Exactly. So having come up in both eras, do you find it easier, more difficult, or just different? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean well, to put you on the spot. <laughs> but I think it'd be, be interesting. Honest, <laughs> in the beginning, I struggled because right. I was used to a label doing everything for me. Yeah. So that was, it took some, you know, getting used to. And, you know, thank God I have such great team working with me and around me. And my attorney is like, Joyce, you should be putting out singles every so often. And this, that you should be doing this. You could be, why aren't you doing this? You're the label now. You have to get this done. So, you know, and I, he just kept instilling in me. You can do these. You can, you have the talent. You have the gifts. You have to do these. You're the label. You are the label. So yeah. once I, I got that mindset and uh, I started approaching it that way, it's much easier now. Right. It's much easier now. But I still, ha I have a lot of support. I cannot do it by myself. Yeah, because I think that, you know, artists, shall we say, of a certain vintage. Mm-hmm or people of a certain vintage with the uh -huh. technology is completely different. And you have yes. to get accustomed to that. And unless you've got help, it means you've got to learn it. But then you're saying, well, me trying to do this as well as that, as well as this is detracting my energy from yes. what I should be doing. Yeah, I, yeah, I go through that as well. So I had to learn to deal with that as well. So 
some days I'm creative, I, you know, so I, I had to learn, okay, today I'm going to record, today I'm going to write, today I'm going to sing. So I had to, you know, separate those times and those days because yeah. like you said, the technologies, there's so much music in the software and I love it all. Um, yeah. You know, you I learned Pro Tools, the, 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 um, Logic. I mean, there's just so much stuff in this arcade. There's just crazy stuff out here and you want to play with everything i call them toys but you can't <laughs> some kind of discipline well that's a very good outlook because it kind of levels them out and it stops them <laughs> from being this fearful thing so you yes. know you kind of go well, yeah let me just play around with this and see what i can mm -hmm. create you know yes yes but the promotion side as you say in the old days you had a team doing that for you yeah. When you're doing it independently, are you kind of the promotion machine yourself? Or are you having to hire people to do it for you? I hire people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I hire yeah. people. You know, and I've, uh, fortunately, I've been um, really blessed to work with a great group of, of uh, promotion company. And I trust them. And that's my main thing. You know, I'm able to trust them because there's so, like I said, so many services everybody can get you <laughs> get you on Spotify and on this playlist and on and that blog and everything but you know where's the proof so if I can you know I find people that I can trust and, and build a relationship with them and that's what I'm doing now and yeah that makes it easier it, it must because I mean you're literally putting your babies in their hands because your your music your songs your poems your whatever yeah. you create yeah. are like your children yeah, yeah. And, you yeah. know, you're handing your babies to these people and saying, listen, do your best job with them. Take yeah. them through school to high school to, <laughs> to graduate. You know, it's yeah. literally that. So I guess there's a whole lot of trust issues that you will have, you know, to find people that you believe in. Right. Exactly. You know, I've been really blessed, you know, to find a really good engineer. I have my go to bass player, go to guitar player now. So it is it's getting it's getting a lot better for me. And I guess those are connections with the musician wise that you've created over the years. Yes. You're, well, so and actually, some some of the guys, I mean, I, I'll look on Instagram. I, I saw this really, really talented guitar player and I was like, whoa this guy is really good so i reached out to him and he was like is this the, the joy sims i'm like yeah you know i really am a fan of your work he's like you're playing i was like no, i'm not playing i'm really not playing yeah. <laughs> so i started making connections that way as well it took me a minute to really reach out because again uncertain but you know really really some really great musicians are out there and you just got to make that connection yeah, and there is that kind of thing because of when you know the name and who Joy Sims is and you think, did she just message me to ask me to come and play for her? Nah, <laughs> this is a joke. This isn't real. <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah, literally. And it, it happens a lot on, on social media, you know, with people impersonating people. So you would be a bit dubious and reticent at first. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so what is next in store for Joy Sims? Well, getting this album out and- Which hopefully will be August, but- August, yes. Yes, okay. getting this album out this August and collaborating, more collaborations. And I'm really looking forward to, well, I've already started, but um, uh, getting into TV and sync with uh, my music. So I'm really okay. focused on that as well. So tell us about that. What, what does that mean exactly? Getting my music in commercials and in movies, you know, right. I had one of the yeah, it was tracks was in that the movie that sci-fi. It was years ago, Species, and yeah. so I want to do more of that in commercials and in film. Right. Well, yeah, even that's that's, don't stop there. I mean, look, you you know, you hear like um, PlayStation, all the video games, and with the uh, streaming now. Everybody needs music. So it's like another whole world opened up wow. the music. I mean, the, the industry has changed so much. It yes. can be quite overwhelming if you try to do everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, so I, I, stick, like I stick in my lane. You know, I, I know music. I love what I do. I love the music. So that's what I do. That's what I concentrate on. Yeah. And the, 
you know, when it starts getting complicated, <clears throat> it's time to hire somebody. So that's yeah. what I do. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. So the AP Connection single came out last year, but that's no, the one, the new, the new, his, the new um, song comes out June 7th. June, that's, that's right. So, yeah. And the album comes out in August, but everybody's going through something. Oh, that out came out last year. Last year, right. Okay. Yeah. I was getting confused. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, and the, they're from, that's, let me correct, they're from France. So the, um, right. yeah. Okay. So did you get that, listeners? You can get all of this. We'll be waiting patiently for August for the album. Yes. She won't, She promised she won't put the date back any further. <laughs> no, okay. It's a promise. <laughs> she won't put, put the date back any further. <laughs> um, okay, that's a promise. But meanwhile, at the moment, everybody's going through something is mm -hmm. out. Yes. And um, that's available on all platforms, is it? Yes, it is. Yes, all digital download platforms. Okay, so, well, we look forward to that. Now, when is Joy Sims coming to London? Well, that will be next year at the earliest. Okay. Yeah, 2022. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm taking it slow. So, yeah, yeah. that is for now, next year. Next year. Because yeah. you know we want to see you here, right? I do, and I want to see you guys too, but you know, it's a pandemic out there still. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm taking it slow. Things are starting to open up and yes. some people are getting their bookings and stuff. So, you know, yes. some people will be here later this year. We were hoping you would be one of them, but she's taking it slowly. She'll be next year. Something yes. to look forward to. <laughs> yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, you never know. It just, right now I'm looking for next year. Yeah. 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 Well, as I said, this lady was very difficult to finally nail down. <laughs> oh but that afro and those earrings were, and the smile, of course, were absolutely <laughs> worth it. So thank you very much for taking the time to talk to the BTM Club. Well, thank you and for having me. It's an absolute pleasure and honor. Thank we you. wish you all the best with your future endeavors. Thank you so and much. And as you say, we look forward to seeing you in London in 2022. Yes, you will. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Love you guys. Good luck with the singles and the album. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All the best. <laughs> thank you.